from the origin of person-centered planning, we were trying to understand and see what it looks like when we just fit people into systems and defined their needs and saw them through the eyes of what a system needs uh, for a person to be in order to generate the funding that's required and to basically service them. And system-centered work tends to be based on a medical model which assumes something's wrong with people and it's the system's job to fix them. And so the system is invested in defining them in terms of their deficiencies and creating a treatment plan and then working to help people get it right before they get to be members and be whole people uh, in the real world. So person-centered planning offers a major contrast to that, which is to say that people don't belong to systems. They belong to themselves, they belong to their families and their communities. And if we see them in a different light uh, by the capacities that they bring, and we understand that their communities are the place where they can contribute and be citizens, then our thinking shifts dramatically from how to fit people into systems and service them there to how do we support people to live good lives in community and then how do we take what we need from systems and services so that services are not bad, they just tend to be wired for their own purposes, for their own self-interest. So a good person-centered planning process calls into question the way we use services and invites us to really change the way most of our services are configured to be more responsive to the people and the way that they want to live in the communities that they're in.